As we all know, the trade deadline is tomorrow, Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern. Now, this is when things really, really start ratcheting up. Now, typically the day before, so this Monday episode, this is when things start happening, but Tuesday, Tuesday is when things get really wild, which is why we're going to be doing a live show the minute the trade deadline ends. And you guys know a lot of trades trickle in just a little bit after that. I will be live when, whenever they happen, I will let you know. That's going to be a fun one. But as of right now, we've already seen some big trades. One that we mentioned last week, Andrew Benintendi to the Yankees. But one, the biggest so far happened over the weekend. The biggest pitching piece on the market, Luis Castillo, is traded from the Reds to the Seattle Mariners. Everybody was thinking it was going to be the Yankees. There were a lot of teams in play here, and the Yankees were one of them, but they were unwilling to give up prospect Anthony Volpe. And the Mariners swoop in and they get the all-star, the best pitcher on the market, Luis Castillo. Now, they gave up a haul for him. Okay. Noel V. Marte, their number one prospect. Edwin Arroyo, their number three prospect. Levi Strout, their number five prospect. And another one, Andrew Moore. Three of their top five prospects on the move for Luis Castillo. That got me to thinking. If the best pitcher on the market, Luis Castillo, hauled in three top five prospects, what in the world does a trade for Juan Soto look like? I tweeted this as soon as that happened. The Reds got three top five prospects for Luis Castillo. I imagine the price for Juan Soto is now eight top 10 prospects, the best concession stand vendor in the stadium, and the GM's second-born child, because the second-born are always the best of the best, says me. Um, but, but seriously, this, this does affect the trade market. Luis Castillo gets three top five prospects. What in the world does a Juan Soto get? I don't know. But I, I actually really like this move, and I want to break it down for a second, because that is a lot of prospects, three of the top five. The, the Mariners are getting the best pitcher on the market. I love this. I love it for both sides. This is why the trade deadline is so good. It's so great and one of my favorite times of the year. You have a team that is on the cusp of being really good. I'm not putting them in the conversation of the elites of the game. But the Mariners are on the cusp of being, of being really good. They're on the cusp of the playoffs. This is them going for it. How did... I just love to see this. You have the prospects. You've built up your system. Now you cash those prospects in when you think, okay, now it's time to go. They still have a rich farm system, but they just went out and got a year and a half control of the best pitcher available. And I love this from the Reds' perspective. It is okay for both teams to come out on a good side of things here. The Mariners are ready to win right now. Now they add Luis Castillo to a rotation of Logan Gilbert, Robbie Ray, uh, George Kirby's been really good. Now this rotation is really deep and really good. And this team that is currently on pace to be in the playoffs has just really bolstered themselves and made themselves much better. But it didn't come without a price. And that's where the Reds benefit. One of the worst teams in the league has given up their pitcher, their best pitcher, for three top five prospects. If one of those hits... It's a success. If one of those becomes a good Major League Baseball player, it's a success. Because Luis Castillo was a free agent in almost in, in just about a year. You might as well get something for him. And they got a lot for him. So the Mariners bolstered their rotation with Luis Castillo. The Reds get a good haul there. David Peralta from the Arizona Diamondbacks is on the move now to the Tampa Bay Rays. I like this. I like this for the Rays. They needed a bat. They needed a bat badly. And they went out and got David Peralta. Gave up a catching prospect to do it. But this guy has been a guy that's flown under the radar out there in Arizona because he hasn't been on a good team in a while. The, the Diamondbacks just aren't good. He's a good hitter. Left-handed hitting outfielder. Good pickup there for the Rays. This, tw this tweet kind of sums it up really well. So where does David Peralta... Where do David Peralta stats 
rank amongst Diamondbacks franchise leaders. This will put it into into shape just how good he has been there. 961 games played. That's third all time for their franchise. 434 runs, sixth. 960 hits, third. 468 RBIs, fourth. 15.3 war, sixth. And one of the best players to don Sedona Red. Wow, that was a poetic tweet there. I really like that. David Peralta is really good. Also, fun note there. David Peralta is sixth all-time in war for the Diamondbacks at 15.3. And Aaron Judge is on pace for over a 10 war in this one season. That's wild. (laughs) So David Peralta goes to... Tampa, Chris Martin pickup for the Dodgers has, has happened. They, they needed some bullpen help badly. Uh, this is a kind of a flyer. He hasn't been great this year, but he has proven to be good in the past. They didn't give up much for him, but the Dodgers acquire Chris Martin. Um, Vogelbach to the Mets as well, which, is, which happened a little while ago. So Daniel Vogelbach, Mets get him, and the Mets haven't lost entering Sunday, haven't lost since they acquired Daniel Vogelbach. So now here we are. The biggest of big pieces are still out there. As in Juan Soto. I say biggest of big pieces. It's Juan Soto. Frankie Montas is out there as well on the pitcher side. Wilson Contreras. Noah Syndergaard is seemingly available. There are a lot of big names that are going to fall here within the next, depending on what time you're, you're listening to this episode, within the next 24, 36 hours, it's going down. Now, I had Ken Rosenthal on here a week or so ago and talked to him about the Red Sox because for me, this is a a big market shift here depending on what the the Red Sox do. They have not been good. I don't believe they they are going to get into the playoffs. And if they do, if they turn it around, which they certainly could, this team isn't it. This isn't the team that's going to win a World Series. So I, I believe the Red Sox should be sellers. I really do. I, and I think they could get a lot for, for what they have right now. Ken Rosenthal and I talked about this. And are the Red Sox committing yet to being sellers? And he said no. At the time, this was last Wednesday, they hadn't yet committed to being sellers. They were going to wait until the last possible second. So if we see anything from the Red Sox, it'll be on Tuesday that we see it. But now over the weekend, we hear that they have started to listen on some of their veteran guys, meaning J.D. Martinez could be available. Nathan Eovaldi could be available. Christian Vasquez could be a good catching pickup for somebody. Whoever misses out on the Wilson Contreras guy, who has been, he's the best catcher on the market, Christian Vasquez is, is now a good backup, seemingly. So it's going to come down to August 2nd for the Yankees. But I just, I love the trade deadline. And I know I say this a lot, but it can affect teams for generations to come. This Mariners Reds trade that we just saw is going to affect both of these organizations for over a decade. Decades. These prospects, Noel V. Marte, number one prospect, he's going to be a stud. You think, seemingly, that's what. Everything points to he's going to get to the big leagues at some point and the Reds could have him for his career. So the trade deadline is, is one of my favorite because it's, it's this awesome mixture of teams all in right now and going for it. And we've seen it time and time and time again, that mid season trade that comes back and helps the team and organization win a world series. Some of the most prominent ones I think of are oldest Chapman when he went to the Cubs for that year and they end up winning the world series. Incredible there. Justin in 2017 goes to the Astros and they win a World Series. This list just goes on and on and on. The Braves last year. I mean, good Lord. They, they acquire Jorge Soler, Jock Peterson, Adam Duvall, Eddie Rosario. They totally transformed their team at the trade deadline and it won them a World Series. Thanks for watching. If you love flipping bats, swinging 3-0, or just talking ball, join us. Call us at 213-537-9339 with your questions. We have a weekly guest, and we have a lot of fun, so hit that subscribe button.